can uh, have this online. And uh, we are off uh, to a good start here. So it is uh, May 8th, Friday, and we are excited for the person that we have on here today. Uh, this gentleman is one of the world's top producers uh, in this entire company that he's in. He'll tell you about that in a little bit, but he is recognized all around the world, uh, not just in the company he's in, but in the industry of network marketing and direct sales. Uh, he has one of the biggest teams in, in the company, but also in the world of the network marketing industry. Uh, he has been uh, an inspiration to me, many other people, uh, and I just want to give it up and uh, introduce, bring on Senior Vice President, Circle of Champions members with ACN, Mr. Michael Mazur. Are you on, sir? I am. Well, Adam, I appreciate those kind words and just excited and honored to be on this call. You know, obviously, all the success that you've had, I've watched you guys build a massive organization. I hit regional vice president. I know you're knocking on the door as senior vice president, but I was just excited to get on this call and you know, share my story and be part of it. So we're thank you for inviting me on the call. Hey, we're glad to have you. And you were also, I think, okay with the delay because you were just on the line with the new regional vice president that you promoted in your organization. Absolutely. Uh, out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, the first one in our team, Mr. Noah Brandy, just a phenomenal, phenomenal gentleman. Did it in uh, a little under three years, well, three and a half years. Awesome. And what, what was Noah's background, if you don't mind telling us? So Noah did a little network marketing in the past. Uh, so he had a little experience, but he was an engineer. His wife, um, they own a bunch of real estate. So, you know, this really made sense. He understood it and uh, jumped aboard this and, and uh, you know, went to the top. That's amazing. And we got Mr. Uh, Shaquille Cooper on here that's co-hosting with us today. Shaquille, can you hear us? I can hear you. How you guys doing? All right. We're doing good. So uh, Mike, should we call you Mike? Michael, what do you, what do you prefer to go by? Call me Mike. All right. All right, Mike. I love it. And uh, we were, um, you know, having a little difficulty at the beginning here. So we appreciate everybody getting on and more people are coming on and we were going to go live with this on our page. And next week we hope to uh, do that. So, but uh, you know, in, in times of challenges, you, you got to adapt, you got to change it up. So we're letting everybody on here. Um, Mike, you know, this is something we wanted to put together. Shaquille and I were talking, you know, with all the coronavirus and the economy, things are, are happening right now. Just a way to hear people's stories that are not just in our company, this is going to actually grow, you know, eventually, maybe bring other people on in different companies as well. But we wanted to feature everyone in our company that's uh, making a difference, really working hard, climbing up the ranks, even with the coronavirus right now. How is everything? Uh, have you guys, what have you guys done to kind of adapt to you know, the, the landscape that's out there because we can't get together in person. And, and how, do you, how are you feeling about everything going on right now with this virus and, and what's happening in the economy? Yeah, well, well, first of all, I want to just say, you know, look, I hope everybody's safe and I hope everybody's healthy. And, you know, we're all going through life together right now. Mm -hmm. and, and can we agree we're going to get through this, you know, but sometimes drastic things have to happen for drastic things to change. And, uh, you know, prior to the coronavirus is, you know, we never built the business this way. This technology uh, we didn't use. Right. Uh, a lot of people didn't know about the technology. Um, but in a, in a 30, 40, 50 day window, uh, I mean, people now, now Zoom's came to a tipping point where it's like everybody knows Zoom. Everybody knows how to get on Zoom. Everybody knows how to use Zoom. So we use that to our advantage to pivot. And, you know, I have a great organization, you know, I, I mean, I can't take credit for uh, the success that I've had here at ACN with my brother, Patrick. It, it's a group of people. It's a group of people that have plugged in, that have went to work, that have, you know, wanted something out of their lives and, you know, applied to the simple system and, and you know, ran on the track of ACN. But, uh, you know, we pivoted and we used to do business face to face. You know, so normally if I was doing a meeting like this, I'd probably be in Baltimore right now mm -hmm. or where you guys are in Annapolis or, you know, in Maryland somewhere doing the present, doing the presentation, doing the training, because that's the way we build our business. And, you know, when the virus happened, you know, everybody shifted. We shifted very quickly. We're now uh, we're doing it online. You know, it's easy to get people online. Uh, people are looking you know, so we shifted and what it's done is a couple things. It's condensed timeframes for us. 
mm -hmm. where normally somebody would come into our business and, you know, they preferably see it in a living room and then they'd have to, so they'd have to travel to that living room, you know, it'd have to work out within their schedule. So they'd have to allocate time. And then if they liked what they saw, they'd have to travel to a training. And that right. usually was on a Saturday. I mean, you guys do probably the same thing we do. Yep. We did Saturday training. So, you know, think about that. Let's say we show them on a Tuesday, all of a sudden Saturday they're at training and then, you know, they like what they see. They want to host their meeting. They're going to do it in their living room the following Tuesday. So if you think about it, that's a seven day window from someone seeing the opportunity someone getting trained in the opportunity and then getting in front of people that are interested uh, in the opportunity. You know, today that's a 24 hour. They see it in the afternoon. We do trainings every night and they can launch their business the next day. So what took us seven days with somebody is now taking us 24 hours. Yeah. And because we've been condensing dime frames, you know, we can get in front of people quicker. Number one, we can show the business to more people faster and, you know, people that are in our space understand one thing, that this is a numbers game. You know, why can everybody have success in our opportunity? Because it's a numbers game. And one thing, numbers don't lie. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go through enough numbers, you're always going to have success. You know, the other thing is we can, we can build, the, there's no more borders. And what I mean by that is, you know, normally you know, when I started the business, I'm from Pennsylvania originally, so the people that I exposed it to were people that I could get to. So there were people in my hometown, there were people that I did business with or worked for, et cetera. But I also had people that I knew in other states. And it was very difficult to show them the business, you know, unless I had to drive to the state or go to the state, which takes time, money, et cetera. You know, today you can, you know, open your business up in the city you're in, in the state you're in, in the country you're in, or the 27 countries we do business. So this has just been such a, a, a change that we've embraced, you know, and it's all on how you look at situations with, right. hey, what's the positive and, and let's make it work. And it's just been phenomenal. So kind of like a blessing in disguise almost. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, before I know Shaquille's got a, got a question, I want to uh, ask one that was a great way to just kind of open up today's podcast, but we also want to know, you know, everybody's stories. We see, you know, the, the grind, the work ethic. We see people getting promotions. But a lot of people might not know, you know, the, the more intimate part of the person that's on stage. Um, how did you get started? Uh, let's, let's even start before that. Take us back before getting involved with the network marketing industry. Uh, what were you doing and why did you choose this industry? So what, what were you doing prior to even seeing this, this company? Well, prior to this, I was working jobs. You know, I pretty much uh, always worked a job. Now, my parents did, you know, network marketing when I was young, young. So, you know, that was an advantage to me because it worked for them. And I grew up around it, but we never do what our parents tell us to do as much as we should. Right. You know, we, we tend to go out there and learn the hard way. So they had success in it. Um, I was very, very young, but uh, I, I came with belief. Like I knew it worked. And, and that's some of the biggest things in this business is belief. You know, hold on 30 seconds here. I got my yard guy out blowing the yard. <laughs> So that's, that's sometimes what happens, right? Now that we're working from home, you got, you got the yard guy, you got the ambulance going past, you know, every, <laughs> the house, right? So uh, Shaquille, as, as Mike comes back, I know you've got some uh, questions for him. So have, has, has Mike been a, a, an inspiration in your life, in your career? Yes, he has been. I actually got a chance to meet him a few conventions ago. It was actually backstage and I got a chance to meet Mike and Pat. And honestly, just having a chance to just sit down and have a conversation. And I remember, you know, them taking off their watch off their wrist and just, I was like, I like your watch. He was like, yeah, try it on. I'm just like, wow, how many people, you know, is going to let you, you know, put their watch, you know, that's worth a lot of money, more than most people homes on your wrist mm -hmm. and that inspiration and just being back there and just having a conversation and seeing where you really can get if you put in a work in ACN is really phenomenal. So they always been an inspiration to me. Yeah. So, Mike, did you have to tell the yard guy to cool yeah. it off a little bit? Now, now, 19 years ago, I never had problems like this. Right. I was the yard guy. 
That's good. But, uh, you know, back to, you know, my parents did it. And, you know, I went from job to job to job. I tried college. Uh, college didn't work out for me. Uh, you know, I didn't apply myself. And, you know, I ended up doing, you know, working at a pizza shop. I did construction. Uh, and I fell into the car business. And, you know, sometimes we just get lost, if you know what I mean. You know, we, we don't look ahead. We just trying to, you know, what I mean by looking ahead, looking years ahead. We're just looking days ahead or weeks ahead. And, you know, I found myself in that industry for about eight years. Uh, on my eighth year, I hated it as much as my second year and my first mm -hmm. year. So, you know, I was, I was a red apple. Like, I was looking for something. I was waiting for somebody to approach me. And, uh, you know, when, when a, a friend's mother called us up and said, hey, do you look at other ways of making money? One thing I've always had is an open mind. Like, I'll look mm -hmm. at anything. And, you know, they say the mind's like a parachute. It only works when it's open. We went and we took a look at it. And, you know, I just fell in love with the company. And here's what I liked in services because I realized being in the car industry and seeing how many people came through the industry, meaning that, that couldn't sell and, you know, how difficult that industry can be. And, you know, when I seen this, I said, well, there's no selling involved. So the biggest hurdle in, in, in life in sales is selling. And if there's no selling here, well, this is going to become not only simple for me, but simple for anybody else that participates. So, you know, we jumped in and, and, you know, went to work. And, um, real quick before Shaquille asks a question, but so you got called by a friend's mother. Was your friend in the business? Did he join or she yeah, joined? Yeah, he was in the business. Okay. You know, she reached out to us and, uh, you know, we were one of the only people there, you know, we're like, yeah, sure. Let's look at this. And, you know, it was exciting. And, you know, for some people on this line that, you know, she was in the business for a year and hadn't made any money yet. So let that sink in a second where I didn't look at her success. I looked at the business. Mm -hmm. She wasn't, you know, what I was looking at. I was looking at the opportunity and the potential of the opportunity. And, uh, you know, we jumped aboard and just started figuring it out. Now, who did you meet at that meeting? Did she do the meeting or was it uh, your, your upline that helped you or was it just from a random person that showed you? No, no. She did the meeting. She ran through it, put me on the phone uh, with Danny, Danny okay. Valenino, who we okay. all know. And, uh, you know, I really, like, I was a yes at the meeting, if you know what I mean. You know, well, I was a yes, but then I'm figuring out how I'm going to come up with the money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I was a yes, you know, because it just made sense. I mean, I knew the phone wasn't a fad. I knew this stuff wasn't going away. Right. And you, you had got started when all they had was, I think, local and long distance and maybe pager service back then or? Yeah. Yeah. They just, they, well, it was local long distance, you know, and, and, you know, they were talking about things that they were going to get into that you're going to get wealthy off of services we don't even offer yet. I'm like, fantastic. I mean, I, I like what we have already, but I, here's what I realized. Everybody had a phone. Wow. Uh, Shaquille, why don't you go ahead and ask Mike a question? Yeah, so I have a great question, actually. So my question is, what drives you to continue to work this business every day after being, you know, the number one organization in the company for the past decade? You know, that's a great question. And it, it, it's people. It's people. It's what I just did, you know, getting on the phone with a gentleman I met three and a half years ago, uh, Noel Brandy, you know, he sat down, we went to lunch after he saw a presentation and, you know, I said, look, you can have it all here if you give it all, if you go to work for, for a season and, you know, he has, and he's hitting RVP, but you know, it's the relationship that I've built over those three and a half years with him. You know, I know him, I know his wife, his newborn, they're having a child on the way, but it's just those relationships. It's watching people come into your business and locking arms with them and watching their dreams come true and watching them grow as human beings. So it's well beyond money now. It's about helping people. Wow. Um, I'll step in when, uh, you know, kind of, I'm, I'm still going back because I, I want the, I want the viewers because they see the SVPs, the RVPs and they, sometimes see, oh, they're just magical people that got lucky or, you know, they just had an advantage. Uh, but you said you were, you know, even had a hard time coming up with the money when you first started. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Look, it took me two high schools to get out of high school. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. you know, it, 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 you know, I'm living in a one bedroom apartment, you know, uh, 
it, it wasn't a, a great existence. And, you know, for people that work a job are going through the same thing. You know, I'm living paycheck to paycheck and not excited about anything and, you know, find myself on uh, the weekends. But it was me. Like, it, it was me. It was the way I was thinking. It was who was I was associating with. And, uh, you know, when I got involved in this, look, it, it wasn't always easy. Right. You know, but if you're chasing your dreams, it is. Yeah. And so when you first got in, um, did you all go really fast? Did you want to build this fast? Were you putting in, you know, five hours a day? Uh, why don't you explain everybody how you first got started and what you did to kind of get your business off the ground? Yeah. So, well, first of all, I attended a training immediately because I tried it myself and it just didn't work. It didn't work. I got questions I couldn't answer. And, you know, I was getting discouraged. So, you know, I said, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. I'm going to go to a training. And, you know, when I came back to the training, I was probably 50% coachable to what they taught me and 50% coachable to Mike's ideas. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we all know how that ended up, not the way we wanted it to. And, you know, I went after people that would I say were the easy people to talk to, you know, but at the end turned out to be the hardest. You know, people like my friends, you know, that were working jobs like me. And remember, I'm a broke car salesman, so my friends were broke. So I showed them the meeting. Most of them didn't do it. Most of them, you know, a couple of them criticized it. And, you know, a couple became customers, which are still customers today. Thank you. Know, thank you. And then I started going after people that were, you know, below. And what I mean by below is, you know, I went after my, my Uncle Bernie. He was 40 years old. He lived with his mother. I'm thinking, this guy needs an opportunity. And I was the only one thinking that, <laughs> you know, and then I was going after my neighbor, Jack, who was unemployed for three or four years. And, you know, he liked being unemployed, you know, and here's, so I didn't go off to a real fast start. So there was a lot of no's in the beginning there, you know, but anything new, you're not going to do it right. If you buy a McDonald's, you're going to burn some hamburgers, mm -hmm. you know, let's be honest with ourselves. But it wasn't until I started getting into personal growth. And, you know, started reading some books, which I did a little bit in, in the car industry, in, in the sales industry. And my father put them in my hands when I was younger uh, because, you know, he did Amway. Um, so I knew those books existed. I just started picking them up and reading them again. And, you know, what I find is my mindset started to change. And I really got to understand this was a numbers game. And you just got to go out there and talk to enough people and you're going to find the ones you find. I mean, one thing that stuck with me is you only need six to take the SVP, mm. you know? Now, how many, how many people do I got to talk to to find six? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't always, it wasn't always an uphill, but it wasn't always a, uh, you know, easy, but you know, life isn't easy. You know, they say life isn't what happens to you. It's how you react to what happens to you. Mm. Yep. And in the beginning when people said no, and it was difficult, you know, sometimes my emotions got the best of me, you know, and maybe this isn't for me. How many of you, you know, maybe this isn't for me. How many times have we said that? Yeah. You know, but kept going. And, uh, you know, finally I'm realizing this is, it's, they're not saying no to, to me personally. They're just saying no to what I'm doing. Right. And, and before Shaquille takes over, what do you remember in your early days when you first got through those those that uh, initial uh, those blocks and the when you got uh, um, traction in your business, do you remember the day or the time when you said, "Wow, this thing's really starting to grow?" And do you remember? Can you go back that far and remember like how and when you got first traction in your business and the first mo real momentum in your business? Well, remember, I wasn't real coachable in the beginning. So that was a hurdle I had to overcome. So we had stop, start business. It would go good for a little bit, you know, and, and I remember the first group of people that, I, that, that eventually joined us and were doing something with us. I figured that my role changed in the business. So I, they're going to take it from here. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know, boy, I was wrong because what I saw was they were following me. You know, and when I wasn't doing anything, well, they're looking at me going, well, if he's not, okay, I guess we're not. And I guess doing nothing is what we're supposed to do. And, you know, things would stop. And I'd say probably it was my third year, mm -hmm. my, my, literally my third year in the business where I had to look in the mirror and realize where I was in business was because of me. It had nothing to do with the opportunity. It had nothing to do with the people that I was attracting. It had everything to do with me. 
And in, in our third year, we just started getting consistent. Mm -hmm. What I mean consistent is just doing it every day. No different than if I owned a business, I'd be there every day. I showed up every day here. And when that happened, it drastically changed. And, and what I mean by drastically changed, we went from barely paying our bills to having extra money to buying new cars to, you know what I mean? Not, not that the monetary is everything, but the money started coming in and the group started coming in because people started doing what I was doing. And that's when I started really realizing my role is, you know, there's two types of leaders here. You, 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 the guys that whip from the back mm -hmm. and the guys that lead from the front. Mm -hmm. And when I became that lead from the front guy, probably about three years in, you know, things changed. Wow. That's awesome, man. Thank you for that insight. I, I you know, people, I, I just think some people think it's un, unattainable, you know, to get to the levels that you're at and regional vice president. But when we hear stories like that, you know, it really gives people inspiration to just keep going and keep getting better. Oh, I, I can remember my second year, and, you know, Pat and I moved uh, to Philly. We're from Pennsylvania. So Altoona, the small towns, so we say, figured, hey, let's move to a bigger city and, you know, eating ramen noodles at night and talking about the future. <laughs> and, you know, James Adlam and Aaron Burt were there many times that we would do meetings together. And, you know, we're going out there and, you know, trying to figure out how we're going to take care of tomorrow's bills today. You know, so we've been there, but it's, is that's life. That's, you know, that's when you're running after something, you know, you got to expect the hurdles and you got to embrace the hurdles. Yeah. Shaquille, why don't you step in? I'm just, I'm just soaking it all in, but I had another question. Um, I know you talk a lot about self-development, you know, what books I remember, uh, I think I heard you said, uh, I forgot the guy's name, but the book, um, is your whole entire team is reading it. Um, but it's from, I, I don't know if it's Napoleon Hill or, but it's a really, really great book. And it, it talks about your mindset. And I know that having a great mindset is everything in this business, because as you said, there will be tough times and there will be times in this business where, you know, you're going to be questioning yourself no matter what level you're at. But what book would you say would be the book that changed your life? That's my book right there too. The, the, the first book that changed my life. Thinking you know, Grow Rich. This book expanded my mind to the possibility. It expanded my mind to consistency, it expanded my mind to you got to give it all. You got to go with your gut. And, you know, then it gives examples. What I loved about that book is it's, it gives examples. This is a book of, of you know, uh, this is people that have done it. You know, they, he interviewed people that have done it. And then we go from that book to this book. And this is a great book of, of the how to in our business, you know, and it's written by a gentleman that same thing. I only follow people that are, or I only read books of people that have had success. And I think a lot of today's we, we find those books of the guru, but they haven't done anything. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it's like, well, look, my mentor always said, before you take someone else's advice, see what their advice got them last year. Mm. You know, how many times do we listen to people that, hey, I'll tell you what you need to do, and they're getting on the bus going home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but in, in still today, the magic of thinking big, you know, here's another one. This guy's a legend in the industry, George Zalicki, you know, went out and did it. You know, not, this isn't fiction. This isn't theory. This is reality. Right. And, you know, wow. we just got, we get our team to read them. Because those things changed my life. And it wasn't the first time I read it. I've read Think It Grow Rich 18 times. Mm -hmm. Yep. And every Shaq. time you read it, you see you get a different perspective. Awesome. Shaq, any, any other question you have? That just proved to me I'm on the right track because when I look at my library, you know, some of those books are there. And I know, what is your outlook on the future of the MLM industry? With everything that's going on right now, everything moving digital, what is your outlook on the future of our industry? This is it right here. You know, this technology right here. So people that are watching saying, okay, great. It took me and my brother working together nine years to hit senior vice president. Okay. There are going to be people that are doing that in two. And, and here's why, because of this technology. Remember, 
I just explained it was a seven day window. Somebody comes in the business, goes to a training, we get in front of therapy, that's seven days. Now we're doing the same thing in 24 hours. We can be virtually seven levels deep on somebody in seven days. Yeah. You know, so this technology right here, the faster we embrace it, the faster we get good at it, it, it'll allow you to, 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 you know, expand your business around the world, which we didn't have that option. Like I said, we were geographically limited to where we could drive or fly to. And, and that takes time. Mm -hmm. You know, this morning I was on three Zooms already. So I did a Zoom out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida with a group. I did a Zoom in, in McAllen, Texas. Uh, and I did a Zoom out of Boston. Now, normally that would have been three different days of going to these places and, and on top of that, spending money. I mean, we've spent thousands, I mean, hundreds of thousands. I'll give you, last year, uh, we spent $350,000 on plane tickets. Now, think about that. But wait, now look, you have to do that to build the business. You know what I mean? There, there, there's expenses in business. Now, we're not spending right. anything. Right. You know, so everybody that's coming in now will be so far ahead in the next 24 and 36 months. I mean, Shaquille, things that took you and I months, they'll be doing in days. Wow. You know, things that, that took you and I weeks, you know, they'll be, you know, or things that took us years, they'll be doing in months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mind blown. Yeah. You know, and with, with us, you know, these guys, the, 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 what I love about ACN is, you know, the four guys that own this company. And, and that's what's, you know, really, after I got in, you know, and struggled for, you know, I got to meet the owners and really got to see who was I'm partnered with, you know, these guys all did this. Like they all know what it takes to, to build an MLM business. They all came out of that space. So they're more reps than owners. If you know what I mean? Like they know what it is to, to be pitching the business and building downlines and everything else. And, you know, these guys are, you know, moving this thing forward. And, you know, I, I, I took a, a gentleman from another MLM, uh, in to see Greg Provenzano. That's one thing about the owners, they're very gracious with their time. Uh, but this meeting was more for, for, for me than it was for the person I took in. Because he asked Greg, he said, you know, why haven't you sold ACN? And Greg goes, what would I do? Mm. This is mm. all I know how to do. What do, what do I do, real estate? Like, I, I, this <laughs> is all I know how to do. Right. You know, he goes, my goal is to have this company in business 30 years after I leave the earth. Mm -hmm. And I'm like meeting over. Yeah. You know? I, That's awesome. Now we, we talk about, you know, you said that, what, what would I do? Real estate? I mean, you know, a lot of people, traditional business owners, um, people that have jobs, they're saying, some people say, well, you know, I already have it going on. I, I, I can make money over here. I could do real estate and make commission. And, you know, why, why did you choose this industry over any other industry out there? Because you, you guys could have got into real estate. You could have got in to other industries. Why, why this one? Well, back in the, back when I started AC and I had a hard time coming up with the money. So real estate wasn't <laughs> an option. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Because I know real estate's a very financially, you know, you get you have money to make money. You well, know? eventually, let me, let me interject. As as you made money, you could have maybe redirected or refocused into another industry. So why stick with this one and pursue this one 100%? Well, number one, no stress. Hmm. Meaning, you know, I don't have tenants and toilets here. <laughs> or, Amen. And, and I, I know how that feels. I know yeah, how right, that feels. Right. I don't have the overhead. I don't like, look, if you think about business, see, I've, you know, never owned a business. So this is business fantasy land mm -hmm. for everybody that's looking at this. This is fantasy land. Think about it. This is a business where they take all the risk. They put all the money up front and all is we got to do is go out there and do one thing is focus on showing people the opportunity and getting customers. Right. You know, and I, I mean, Adam, you, you've owned your business and, you know, did you have to do payroll? I, I had to do everything. You have to do everything. <laughs> and even though payroll takes your time right. and costs you money, but you got to do it. You, but, but you're not building your business, you right. know, 
you, you have to look at the next thing coming down the road and do the investigation on that and spend time and money in that, you know, which you have to do it here. I never had to do any of those things. All as I had to do is say, okay, what are we marketing? How are we going to do it and go duplicate what they showed me to do? I tell people all the time. I mean, with real estate, because I owned five real estate companies and I got involved in the industry with ACN, uh, watched a couple buddies of mine have a lot of success in it. And then 2008, you know, happened. So I tell people, I tell Shaquille, I've mentored Shaquille uh, for years. And I said, don't do anything other than ACN because of the stress and, you know, having to know legal, you know, the legal uh, terms and things change every year. Uh, accounting, you have to know accounting, you have to deal with problems if somebody doesn't show up. If, you know, I, I told, I tell everybody, I say, if, if you can't clean the toilets at your real estate office and you shouldn't be in business, but in ACM, we don't have to worry about that. No, no. You know? Got up this morning, went to my back office, you know, my, my check posted and so did everybody else on my teams. And I did nothing but wake up and look, you know, and, and that's the benefit of being in these businesses. Look, the key to this industry is finding a company that's going to be there 20 years after you get involved. In it. Mm -hmm. That's the key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the key. And there's, and there's not many of those that are in it for the longevity. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, they're not. And, and you know, the, the owners have different priorities. Some owners don't know what it's like to be in the field. You know, everybody here's in the field. You guys know what it's like to get the nose. You know what it's like to, you know, well, before drive the miles and mm -hmm. do what you had to do. You know, a lot of owners are looking at this saying, hey, look, that, that must be easy for you guys. You know, these mm -hmm. guys are sympathetic to what, what we do. Right. Because they've done it. Yeah. And that's why they're great owners. Had you, had you been pitched other businesses before this one, or was this the first company you saw and got in? You know, no, I looked at, I, I, I was pitched Amway. Uh, I was pitched Herbalife, you know, but working on a car lot, a lot of people came in, but it came back to sales and, you know, being in the sales business, I realized not everybody can ask for the money and not everybody can sell. And when you're in that in, when you're in a product-based business, you're changing a buying habit. So you're selling them something. Mm. You're asking for money and you're repeatedly doing that and doing it over and over again. And, you know, there's virtually no end zone here that didn't exist. I, and I, you know, politely said, no, I knew right. it worked, but I also knew that, you know, it, not everybody can do it here. Everybody can do it. I believe that. Shaquille, you got another question? I actually have a question. Um, when it comes to, I'm really big on vision boards and goals. Uh, what were some of your goals uh, before you started having success in ACN? And then what are some of your goals now that you achieved all of the success and everything? What are some of your goals uh, today? Well, you know, vision boards are everything. You know, it's funny. I have my group do them. Um, we do them like we did one before uh, New Year's, you know, this year in 2019. And you know, here's why Patrick and I did it early on in our business. And I, when I say early on, I'm saying months in and went home and put a vision board together. And we just thought as big as we could think back then, Bentleys, I think we put two Bentleys up there and all kinds of homes and beach homes and this and that. And, you know, it's such a great, just to do that exercise, there's something in your mind that just switches. You know what I mean? Because now you're subconscious, you're enrolling your subconscious. And how it works, I don't know, but I know it works. And about five years later, Patrick and I moved to Philly. We moved from there to uh, Boston. And I was unpacking one of our, one, a box and I opened it up and there's that vision board. Now, this is probably four and a half years after we did it, maybe five. And everything on that board, we had. Wow. Now, my only regret was I didn't think big enough. Mm -hmm. right. So, you know, today my vision, my vision board is, you know, 20,000 IBOs a month. And what that represents to me is we're going to be helping 20,000 people a month that can go out there and change their lives to whatever level that is. Look, some people are in this and $500 a month is, 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 is a godsend for them. You know, they love what they do. They, that, they, they, you know, they said 74% of the bankruptcies last year would have been avoided if the household had an extra $500 a month, mm. you know, and then there's other people like yourselves that, you know, Hey, look, I want to go all the way. 
-hmm. You know, if other people have done it, I want to do that too. And everywhere in between, but vision boards are everything, you know, and I'm, I'm committed to, to making this the largest company in network marketing globally, period. That's awesome. Uh, Mike, if you could give someone advice, okay, let's say someone, uh, let's start with someone new. Um, if you could give some advice to someone to do something to do in the next 24 to 72 hours, uh, what, what advice would you give them? Well, first of which, I, I would say, look, what do you want? Mm. You know, figure out what you want. And I mean, when I mean what you want, put a vision board together. Here, let me show you. Uh, that, that, that's, that's a vision board that I put together. So figure out what you want. Now, don't get paralysis by analysis. You know what you want, write it down, and then, you know, put that list together of the people that you know you have to call. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm always prospecting, like always, that's all I do. But if I was to go back and start over, I would have reversed my list. I would have went after the best people first, okay. and I would have been extremely coachable to what they told me to do. The you best, know? the best first. So a lot of new people, you know, are intimidated, afraid, scared to call those what we call A players, people that have already had success, business owners. We know that, you know, those are the people we should be going after. But what advice do you give the people that might be afraid to, to do that? How do they get past that and actually go out there and make those calls? Well, remember, it's, look, Adam, you're not scared to talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. Shaquille, you're not scared to talk to anybody. So if I'm on your team, it's like me partnering up with, uh, uh, who's, the, who's the great fighter, uh, you know? Conor McGregor. Conor right? McGregor. Tyson. You, guys are, you guys are Conor McGregor. And if I had Conor McGregor next to me, I wouldn't be scared of anyone, yes or no. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, you know, because people, and I know the way you guys build your business is you're hands-on like us. You're willing to talk. You're willing to do the presentations. People realize it's not about you. It's about you edifying somebody and putting them in front of it. Look, here's what I realized. It was easier for me to tell a story than do the presentation. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. It was easier, to, it, it would be easier for me to tell Adam's story than do the presentation. Mm -hmm. So once you start looking at it that way, you know, that's, it's easy. And I'll give you an example. Even to this day, right, how I recruit people is I tell someone else's story. I feed my lions. And I'll give you an example. I get a guy, I, I love cars. I'm always on a car a lot, buying cars. It's one of my vices. But, you know, was, you know, probably about 60 days ago, I was on a car lot, met this guy, his name's Ed Britz. Uh, he owned a transportation company. We just started talking, you know, he's looking at my car and we're talking back and forth. And, you know, he's like, you know, and, and I'm always interested in people. I want to know about them. Like, look, we're fishermen at the end of the day. That's what we are. And, you know, when, when, you know, I listen to what he did and he's telling me the overhead and the fixed cost and he has 10 trucks on the road, two trucks are broken down and oh my God, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. And just the normal business that people have to go through, you know, he goes, well, what do you do? I said, well, I moved to Texas to work with this person named Monica Bernardino. Give you a little background on her. I'm like, she's from Canada. She's bringing something to Texas that's never been done before. He goes, what's it all about? I said, it sounds like you're interested in talking to her. Let me, let me put you guys together. Well, can you give me more information? I'm like, yeah, her name's Monica and she's having massive success. Now, would you like to meet her? I, can, I, like, I know I could get her on the phone. And what I did was, is all as I did is I passed him off to her. Mm -hmm. And, but I'm a professional peaker and passer. Now, Ed met Monica and because she was edified. He signed up, jumped in the business, and uh, today's an ETL on the team. But my point is, is even today, that's how I do the business because it's easier for me to tell someone's story than it is for me to do the presentation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If 
how about for someone that might have might be in the business? Maybe they're past that first stage. You know, we hear a lot of times people say, I'm, I, "I've run out of people to talk to." Um, maybe even people that have been in for a year, two, three years, and maybe they've hit that wall because you said it took you a couple of years to get through that that wall. Uh, what advice would you give maybe a more seasoned person that may have maybe stuck? Okay. Well, you know, allocate time. Like go, I'm going to go back to, I'm always recruiting. Mm -hmm. right? So right now I do a lot of calls to real estate agents and I straight cold call them. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I'm always recruiting. How can I teach cold market recruiting if I'm not doing it myself? Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm always looking for that next person. You know, the person comes up and says, Hey, nice car, you know, oh, fantastic company. I work for is giving them away. Would you like one of them? It's time for, a pre it's time for me to, to talk about the business, you know, you know, and, and go back through some of the people that you've already communicated with, not the ones go here. Look, here's the biggest thing I can tell you. The hardest people to the recruit are the ones that are here because it's how people think mm -hmm. the easiest people to recruit are the people here. I'm going to say, well, how do I recruit the people here? Be excited telling someone else a story. Love I mean, it. you've got some great stories on this line. Yeah. You know, that's number one. The other thing is, you know, I got creative. I ran ads in, 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 uh, in, in on Craigslist. You know, I would always allocate time to go out and talk to people, you know, now obviously the situation we're in, you know, some, you know, they opened up Texas so you can go out here, but some situations that's not the case. So, you know, put an hour a day, I'm going to, you know, make five contacts today. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I don't care if I got to call five realtors and, and talk to them and say, Hey, look, I got something to help you make more money per transaction. I'd love to share it with you. You ever use Zoom? You know, but just go out there and get the nose. Yeah. But look, here's what I really realize. And I'll be honest, everybody on this, I don't care if you're in for a week, a day or two years. If I said, look, I'll give you $50,000 right now, but you got to have 50 names and numbers on a piece of paper that you haven't shown the business to how many of you could come up with the, how many of you would I write a $50,000 check to? Right. Right. Cause you get real creative. You put mailman. <laughs> I don't know the mailman, right? <laughs> but I know the mailman, if you know what I mean. And oh, by the way, I showed the mailman my business. He didn't sign up, but he gave me another guy who signed up who has 600 people underneath them now. Wow. That was from my mailman. Wow. <laughs> you know? Amazing. Amazing. Shaq, you got a, you got a question? I mean, I'm, I'm blown away. <laughs> I'm blown away just by everyone else. Um, but I know you, man, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I don't think I've ever been lost in words before, you know, but just honestly, just seeing you guys be an example, you know, being in the trenches. I know you guys literally have been working since I've been involved in AC going on seven years. I've always seen you guys work. And a question is, how is it working, you know, with your brother side by side? You know, most people, they don't have a chance to, to work with that simple but I know you all have an opportunity to build a business together. How has that been? Phenomenal. I mean, you know, we're brothers and, you know, I just got lucky to have a great brother, you know, just an amazing human being that's, you know, always working on himself, you know, and that's the, I won't let him outwork me and he won't let me outwork him. So we're always in that going back and forth. And sometimes, you know, we all go through a little, Hey, let me take a breath and he's running. So I'm going to start running again. And, you know, and it, it's, it's been a great, great building a business with my brother, you know, cause we get to do what we like to do together. You know, that's been phenomenal. But, you know, it comes down to example, Look, people follow you and, you know, I'll just get real, real with people is look, when I went ETL, I thought my, my, you know, my position in the company changed. I thought when I hit ETL, I went from recruiting to coaching. I thought all of a sudden I'm at this position. It's time for me to coach. I got seven or eight people. Okay, here, here, here's what I need to do. And what I found was not right away. Time either promotes you or exposes you. I mean, if we hang out long enough together, we all know each other's faults. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, when those people saw that, well, we were coaching, well, they started coaching. And next thing you know, no production was happening. No customers were coming in. So, you know, we went back to work. Now, the problem was, is I couldn't go back to work with the old ones because I set a bad example for them. Mm-hmm. I had to go find new ones. And then we went and, you know, okay, great, went, you know, regional director. And then I'm like, okay, for sure this time, my position has changed. Now it's time to coach and take the ETLs because I got some ETLs. I got some stuff coming in coach. Now, here was the difference at regional director. It took a little longer to slow down because I had a little bigger team. But the same thing happened where people were looking at me. And like I said, we spend enough time together. We'll figure each other out. And, you know, there weren't, oh, Mike's coaching and we must coach. He's doing conference calls. We got to do conference calls. And, you know, 30, 90 days later, you know, well, no customers are coming in. Not many reps are coming in. And, you know, so we were, okay, let's go back to work and go out and get new people and find new people. And then we went RVP. And then I was for sure, for sure, for sure, it changed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, same thing, you know, went RVP. Now that took a little longer to slow down. I still had a great, we had a residual check and, you know, but the same thing happened. And it wasn't until I came to the conclusion. That's why I said three years. In my third year, we were RVPs. And I'm just like, my role never changes. Mm. The only thing that changes is things get nicer. (laughs) That's it. You know, you become better, you attract better people, you know, you, 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 you're living a less stressful life. You know, you're not worrying about how gas, how, you know, I mean, I remember times that I'm like, I don't even know how I'm getting to my next meeting because I don't have the gas to go in my car, you know? Wow. But my point is, is, is yeah, that was that. And, and from then forward, we've led from the front. I, um, you know, a lot of, again, and, and I keep hitting on this. So I'm going to ask you, you know, dive into it a, a little bit more because I feel you know, a lot of people give up way too soon in this industry, you know, because they try to, if they don't have success right away, or if their parents don't become their customer, they get discouraged or their friends won't join their team. What would you say to people that are going through, you know, those rejections, those issues? Um, because I know you've gone through them. I've gone through them. Did you ever feel like you were at an all-time low and just ready to maybe toss in the towel and give up? Or did you always know that you were going to keep going no matter what? Those times hurt. And especially in the beginning, you know, because we tend to take it personal. Mm. You know, I, I had something early on that happened to me that really, you know, really snapped me out of that. And, you know, everybody here knows Danny Volanino. Yeah. I mean, just, just a great human being, a great mentor, uh, you know, just a phenomenal guy. And, you know, if you ever got to work with Danny, you're going to find out Danny's very to the point. Like Danny don't mix words. And, and, but I love those types of trainers because I gravitate to them. Just tell me the way it is. I'll go do it. Don't tell me it's easy when right. it's not. And I remember probably my second month in the business. And I went to my buddy's house. His name's Tim. And Tim and I went to high school together, uh, went to college together. He graduated. I didn't. And he was a male nurse, but every time Tim and I got together, you know, we always talked about like, how can we get more? How can we do more? Like, how many of you have friends like that? Yeah. You're always like, look, how, how, how can we do it? And I remember I went to Tim's house and I showed him the business and, you know, Tim was a no, but he wasn't a no, like just, Hey, no, it's not for me. You know, he was like, look, this doesn't work and goes on the internet and pulls out down everything that's wrong with everything. And, you know, just spend all the time figuring out on why it wouldn't work, but just started bombarding me. And you're smarter than that. You're this. And I remember leaving his house and I was at the bottom, you know, I, I was at the bottom of the roller coaster. And I remember I called Danny up and I said, Danny, you know, he probably won't even remember this phone call because he gets so many. But I said, look, I said, you know, I just went to my friend's house, Tim, and I showed him the business. And I was like, you know, he's not interested, but he started really pointing some things out. And he goes, Mike, next. Mm. And I said, well, hold on. You don't understand. Like, this is a really good friend of mine. You know, I look up to this guy, you know, and this is what he's saying. He goes, Mike, next. Mm. I was like, Danny, you don't understand how this has affected me. He goes, okay, I'm going to take a minute. He goes, let's reverse it a second. He said, imagine if Tim came to your house Hmm. and he showed you what he's doing. And he said, look, here's what you need to do. You need to go back to college, Mike. 
you need to become a male nurse. You need to come and you live next door to me and that's what we do. He goes, what would you say? I said, well, I'd say no. And what if he persisted? I would say, well, heck no, I'm not interested. No, thank you, right? He goes, do you see he's just saying the same thing to you? Right. And that really took the roller coaster out of me. And now I have fun with people. I mean, I literally have fun. You know, Pete, I talk to people, you look at other ways of making money. You know, I give you an example. I was in a gym six months ago and I'm always looking, like I said, I'm always recruiting. I'm, I consider myself a talent scout. Right. You know, I no different than if we owned a, an NBA basketball team or we owned an NFL team or we own, you know, you're always looking for what? Your next best player. And, you know, I was in the gym and I watched this guy go from person to person to person. And, you know, what I noticed about him is every time he left that person, he left them with a smile. So I ended up walking over to him. His name's John. I was like, you know, I introduced myself. I said, John, I said, look, I said, I've been watching you. I said, you know, I've seen you go from person to per person to person. I said, and everybody that you've left, you left them with a smile. He's like, well, I've been doing this for 20 years. I was like, man, you're good at it. Mm -hmm. I said, do you look at other ways of making money? And he goes, well, depending on what it is. And I said, you know what? You're probably getting rich doing this. Sorry to bother you. And I walked away. Wow. Now, guess what? Hold on a second. Oh. Hold on a second. I didn't say, whoa, what are, what are you talking about? Right. Well, you said, depending on what it is. I mean, you know. Right. And when that attitude, you have it, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It's just a no. Mm -hmm. If you owned a McDonald's, you wouldn't be sitting out in front of the McDonald's crying and past, crying for every car that drove past your McDonald's. Mm -hmm. You would be in there serving the ones that are interested in eating there. Right. You know, it's all perspective. Love it. And I have fun I with people today. Trust me, it's fun. And, and, it. and here's the other thing: is if you remember when you're, how many of you like recruiting? Great you're going to be great recruiters because as human beings, we communicate with feelings, not words. Now, how many of you don't like recruiting? <laughs> They'll feel that too. Uh -huh. We communicate with feelings, not words. So if you're excited about something, remember, nobody's excited to get a second job. Nobody's excited to learn something that they don't know anything about, but people are excited to do something fun, lucrative with great people. And that's what we have. Yeah. yeah. But they feel that. You know, I, I teach my ETL class every Friday night. And I'm like, I hate recruiting. I'm like, I know. And no one's going to join your team because they're feeling that. Same, same thing with customer acquisition, right? They're feeling it. Wow. I, I love it, man. Shaquille, you got, uh, so much. you got anything else you'd like to ask? I learned so much. I, I can't wait till we have another international event so that we all can meet up in person and you know, I'm excited. I'm actually, I know you got uh, a building in Dallas. I'm actually going to be back in Houston um, soon to take over that marketplace and get things back rocking and rolling. So I'm really excited to hopefully work with you all down and build that Texas marketplace. Absolutely. It's a great, it's a great marketplace to build. But remember, we could build it right now. That's the new <laughs> thing right here. Right. You know, we can build it right now. Just taking action and, you know, going through it and, um, I, I think this is so valuable uh, for everyone here. And hopefully, Mike, you can also see that this podcast is a little different, you know, than um, a lot of times we get on to different things, me included, for different teams. And we want to train, train, train all the time. But with this podcast, we're kind of taking a step back, really getting to know who the people are and, you know, what they've gone through in their journey of, of uh, getting involved with the industry and getting to the top. Yeah. And I love what you guys are doing because this is the future for us mm -hmm. right here. This is the future. You know, I'm looking for homes in Miami as we speak because now I can live anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, love I love it. I love Dallas, but I like Miami better. <laughs> I love it. Real, real, do you have a, do you have a minute to answer a question? Absolutely. All right. So, you know, a lot of people have questions and, and I think um, Mike too, I think, what, what would, before we answer the question, what would be your advice to people that say, I don't know what to say to someone, you know, people hit me up all the time and they're like, 
what should I say to real estate agents and how do I, what's the perfect script? And it kind of, I'm kind of like, I'm going to let you answer this question, but I'm like, there is no perfect script. I mean, you know, people want to know, what do you say to people? What, what should I say to this person? What should I say to that person? What's your advice? What would you tell someone when they, you know, that maybe is stuck because they don't know what to say? It's funny you say that, you know, that, so that happened to Patrick and I, so we move, we're, we're living in Eltoona, Pennsylvania. And if you know anything about it, it's a small city in the center of the state. So we moved to Philadelphia and we did it just because not talking to our mentor, just going, Hey, there's more people there. Let's go there. Let's build a business there. And, you know, we got to Philly and realized we didn't know anybody. And I remember I called Mike Koopas up and, you know, and, you know, that's one thing I loved about these guys. They were always generous with their time. Mm. And, you know, I said, look, here's where, you know, Pat and I were on speaker and I said, look, here's where we are. We only need a minute of your time. I said, you know, we're, we're in, in Philadelphia. We moved here. We're working our business. And, you know, what do you say to somebody? And, and I'm sitting there like this, pen and paper, ready to write. And he goes, say something. <laughs> right he's like put a smile on your face mike put that cell phone in your back pocket and say something mm -hmm. and the world's the words will come now here's what i've learned how to recruit is i always remember now if you're a talent scout you're always looking for your next best player right you're always looking for your next best person right you're looking for people better than you I always start off with a compliment. Like I give them a gen, I give them a very genuine compliment because I'm always looking for people that go that extra mile that do that. How many of those people walk through your lives? Right. That go that extra mile. The other thing is I've created a habit of talking to everybody, mm -hmm. you know, now look, you guys are walking past SVPs. Yeah. You know, you're walking past SV. It's as hard for you to talk to somebody about the business as it is for me to not talk to somebody about the business. Right. Can we agree? Good habit, bad habit. Right. You know, but just be yourselves. Be, you know, they're, they're going to partner with you at the end of the day. They're not good. You know what I mean? They're going to, okay, great. Well, what's this all about? You're excited. You're talking and, and think about it. Nobody talks great about people today. How many of you had trouble learn? How many of you had to learn how to edify? <laughs> you know how many of us had to learn how to edify you know the 85 percent of everything we read see and hear is negative so we tend to gravitate to the negative you know it was, it's easier to point out someone's faults than point out their positives yes or no yeah you know so remember when you're talking to that new person and you're talking great about somebody and you're telling that story about, you know, Adam and how he's having this massive success. And man, I'd love to get you in front of this guy. You know, I know you guys would hit it off. You know, if I could just be that catalyst that, you know, what's it all about? I'm going to let Adam explain that. Can you give him more information? He's having massive success. Just, just telling well, stories. Is, that's is, it. And, that's and here it. we have someone who said, how do you get rid of reluctance or analysis paralysis? And I think it's just, uh, telling stories. If you're afraid to talk to people, then talk about somebody else. Don't try to pitch them the business. Yeah. It, you know, how do you get over any fears? Do you do it? You do it. You know, I mean, think about the first time we all drove a car, right? You know, I, I remember I started my dad's driveway back and forth, back and <laughs> forth. You know what I mean? And, and then he took me to an old country road. And, you know, I remember the first car that passed us, I almost went in the ditch, <laughs> right. you know, but today, how many of you get into a car without even thinking about it? Like, you don't, I got to put the key in. It, you're in that unconscious confidence where you're, you're doing it without thinking. And that's okay. what you'll develop here, what you got to do. You got to do more of it. We have a question that says, what struggles have you had to overcome? But uh, you've, you've uh, I know, talked about that earlier in the uh, podcast. So maybe uh, they can go back and watch this when we post it. Um, one person wants to know, you mentioned Craigslist. What did you advertise exactly? Um, people always want to know, again, you know, what's the perfect script? What do you that's say? You know, a, That's a great question. So I, use, I run an ad. It's called, it says, here's all it says. Public speaker, sales trainer wanted. That's it. Mm -hmm. Now, in my phone, my name and phone number. And here's why I find that people have done public speaking and sales training in their life. 
you know, have done something, they usually moved up a little bit more. Like I, I ran the ad, I got a guy that owned two insurance agencies. And he's just like, I'm bored. I'm looking for something. What is this all about? And because they don't put anything on there about anything else, they have to call to see what it's all about. Very good. Very, and, and like you said earlier, be creative. Try a couple of different things. You know, see what works best. Yeah. Don't, don't exaggerate. Don't, don't hate. Don't tell them it's a job. You know, it, you know if I'll put, you know, a uh, home-based business opportunity to work from home, not a job. Mm -hmm. because if you start a relationship off on the wrong foot, you'll never, it never goes anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what, what, you know, we talked about the struggles, the greatest failures you've ever had, the biggest, what was the biggest failure in ACN? I know you talked a little bit about that before, not being coachable, but was there anything else that comes to mind? I mean, yeah, I, I've, <laughs> I've made every mistake in the book twice. <laughs> you know, and, and what I mean by that is, is, you know, being that leader that's whipping from the back, mm -hmm. you know, that was, you know, a big thing for me. I think that was probably the biggest mistake that I made coming through the ranks when it was like, look, you got to lead from the front. You know, you got to, you cannot ask people to do what you're not willing to do. Right. You know, and, that, and, and, what would be, what, you know, I know, a lot, and, and um, this is the last question, Mike, we appreciate you. We're getting yeah. to our hour here. And, and I just think that so many people get stuck on the, how do you say this? How do you say, what should I say? What should I post on Craigslist? What should, what would be the advice to people that are always maybe seeking for that right thing to say and ask, you know, because I, like you said, just take action, just say something. Yeah. But I feel like that holds so many people back from being great and going out there and doing it. Any one of you could have sponsored me and my brother. Any one of you. Mm. We were ready. Right. We were ready. We were looking. It was just the first person to come and talk to us, you know, about this opportunity got us. Wow. You know, and, and I'll give you an example. I, a friend I grew up with, and when I say grew up with, we were neighbors. And it was funny, you know, Pat and I built our business and then we left and, we, you know, got started in, in, in our hometown and we moved to Philadelphia and started building our business. And we, when we hit our VP, my mom put uh, in the newspaper, congratulations to my sons, hit our VP. She was so proud of us. And my neighbor called me. I grew up with this guy. His name's George Ferris. And he's like, I didn't realize you were an ACN. I signed up in that three years ago. And I'm like, why didn't you ever talk to us? Wow. I didn't think you were interested. Wow. Now, you know what George is doing now? Mm. He's working. You know? You know what the people that sponsored us are doing now? Whatever they want. <laughs> you know, but it's, it's, it's getting out there and just saying the right thing and being okay with the yes and being okay with the no. Right. Look, right. we went out and built New York. So when Patrick and I moved to New York, we didn't know anybody. So we're living in Miami. They open up energy. And by the way, guys, that's been one of the greatest services that we've ever been able to take advantage of. So we moved to New York not knowing anybody. And I remember days I would drive into New York and talk to people. And I'd come home late at night. You know, I remember I'd be calling Patty, you know, one o'clock in the morning, stuck in New York traffic. And, you know, how'd you do today? I'm like, bro, I got all the no's today. So I'm real excited about tomorrow because it's all mindset. That's awesome. It's all mindset. Well, Mike, you've uh, gone over and above, above today. And um, we really appreciate you. I think that everyone has, you know, the questions of how do I do it? What should I say? How do I approach people? And I think you've answered all those questions through today's podcast. And I really um, hope everyone goes back and watches this again once we can get this online. And Mike, you're, you're such a good sport, man. And what I love about you is that you're willing to help anybody, you, you know, um, and you're just uh, an awesome person to follow. So I want to thank you for being on today. And as we continue to do these podcasts, we're going to be doing them every Friday. And uh, we hope you share this with your team. And we hope it's going to inspire and encourage a lot of people. Adam, thank you. And, you know, congratulations on your success. And you and Shaquille have just been leading from the front, yeah. you know, and everything that you have going on, you're still 
hard charging with ACN. And, you know, for the people on this line that aren't taking advantage of that, I promise you guys, if I had Adam as an upline or Shaquille and they were doing a presentation and it wasn't in my team, I'd be pissed off. <laughs> I'd be like, I got to put more people in. I want to maximize their time and I want to put more people in front of them. So guys, just appreciate you guys allowing me to be on this, inviting me on. So thank you. You're awesome. Thank you again. Thanks, Mike. And everybody, let's make, let's end the week strong. Let's go out there. We got training tomorrow. Let's just make a big push these next couple hours today and through the weekend. And let's go uh, live our dreams. Let's go achieve our dreams so we can live them. So thank you again, Mr. Michael Mazur, amazing senior vice president, Circle of Champions. Look him up uh, online and YouTube. Watch his videos. They're so inspiring. And I uh, just can't wait to uh, be up there with you guys. So thanks a lot. Enjoy y'all's Friday, and we'll see you next week. Take care. See you next Thank week. You.